kind of bored. We could play with these dolls. Yeah. Hey Barbie, that was an amazing date. You wanna go back to my place? Check out the hot tub? Uh, yeah, that sounds good. Oh sweet, let's go. I guess Barbie's already in her swimsuit, so I don't really have to do anything. Your doll have a swimsuit? Like, I guess. Oh, absolutely not. No, uh-uh. You, you look awful. What Are you kidding mean? me? Do you have any idea how long it takes me to get ready, especially for a date and to get into a hot tub? You look like a hot dog that was rolled down the floor of a barber shop. You what? look disgusting. No, absolutely not. You can't just roll out of bed, barely shower, and put on dollar store deodorant and expect to get with this. No. You got a man skin, just like in real life. By the way, where did you even buy a doll that has pubes like that? It was on clearance. I can see why. Guys, Manscaped's Perfect Package 4.0 has everything you need to make you look your best. The Lawnmower 4.0 and Weed Whacker 2.0 make taking care of unwanted hair easier than ever. Get 20% off with free shipping off your order now at manscaped.com forward slash angry Joe show plus two free gifts. Hey guys, so we just got back from Blue Beetle, uh, the apparent first film in the DCU James Gunn has said this before even though this was under the uh, under the old guard as well the DCEU um and kind of a, a a surprise project when i heard about this i actually like blue beetle from uh some of the animated stuff in DC DC animation still killing it and uh but it's it's not a you know a lister right and so i was a little surprised by it uh, coming out here. Uh, superhero films have not been doing well. Nope. Uh, and especially the DC uh, universe. Flash, a colossal disaster. A colossal bomb. Black Adam. Recent uh, films that have seemed to have been doomed uh, by, by James Gunn and rebooting everything. Because why would you go and see something like this if it's just going to be rebooted, right? I mean, and I think that's why James Gunn was like, th th this is part of mine. Th th I... I yeah, even though there's no indication in the film, I'll just say it right that that this has anything to do with James Gunn. I, th stuff. I thought he had said that the the Zolo is going to continue on as Blue Beetle, has he? but I don't. I don't know. So like, I think I thought, like clarified. It's like, hey, this is not part of my thing, but we like that guy. But we really like that guy. Yeah. And and you know what? That is, uh, I would be I would be for that because I think one of the best parts of this film is uh, Zolo. Uh, known as uh, otherwise uh, Mariduena, uh, otherwise known as Miguel from Cobra Kai. Okay. I really liked him in that. And this kid has charisma. I fucking love it. And uh, the recent Blue Beetles, um, the recent Blue Beetle is a, uh, you know, a, 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 a Jamie Reyes, Jaime, as Jaime. they make jokes in the film, Jaime Reyes, uh, who is a Mex Mexican American descent. And, you know, and the film, one, one of the things that gives this film some flavor is it leans very heavily on that uh, Mexican heritage uh, family, right? Little uh, Vin Diesel up in there. Oh, yeah. and, uh, and It's like, you're going to say it three times, you're going to summon something. Right. <laughs> you're not <laughs> ready for <laughs> uh, In his fucking car. Uh, no, and, and basically, uh, you know, so heavy themes of family and there's a lot of spanglish there's a uh, you know subtitles for those that that uh can't understand spanish and uh apparently this film takes place in texas though i didn't notice it at all yeah surprisingly this is a suburb of texas in the future dc universe it's just uh so yeah, i was like yeah. trying to figure out like yeah. some kind of miami looking thing I, yeah, I like some, Florida. Well, yeah apparently uh okay this film filmed in el paso texas and parts of puerto rico all right apparently the director is puerto rico hey <laughs> so i wanted to come out here and tell you this you know this film is awesome, Puerto Rican director, Latin American heroes, let's go out and support, and this is fucking awesome, but uh, I felt 
like, besides Zolo, with his a lot of charisma, and uh, George Lopez, who is a great comedian, uh, does his work here uh, in carrying the film and helping the film out, it's just a story that is too, unfortunately, too generic. Uh, it leans so much on tropes that we've seen play out a hundred times. And if you don't know, the recent Blue Beetles have been based on, in my opinion, it seems very apparent that it's based on Guyver, Bio Booster Armor Guyver. One, uh, <laughs> an opportunity for me to tell you about one of my favorite um, Japanese superheroes. There's an anime out. There's a manga out. The creator may never actually fucking finish the series. Uh, Mark Hamill was actually in one of the live-action Guyvers. There's two live-action Guyvers. Uh, I recommend go out and seeing them. This film has those vibes, and so when I when I when he's transforming, uh, when it's this suit uh, sort of melding with your body and almost horror show a little bit. I wish they would have pushed those elements a little more here. It's working, and it's cool. It even does some. Uh, it's got very like '80s uh, synth vibe, a little bit at the beginning and a little bit at the at the end. Mm -hmm. But that's another problem. I feel like the tone of this film is kind of all over the place. A lot of the musical choices just kind of feel inappropriate for me. I'm just annoyed by it, ruining otherwise good action scenes, in my opinion. And it's just painfully generic. And I wanted to come over here and sing the praises and say, go out and see it immediately. But what it feels like is an HBO direct to max kind of thing and guess what i discovered that's what it's originally intended to be on hbo max and then they bumped Makes it sense. up to full <clears throat> full uh theatrical release so that's my opinion on it um and they do something at the end i think uh other than it devolving into a cgi robot fight power ranger i'm fight. so tired look i love pa hey how dare you I love Power Rangers. Not not two hundred million dollar big screen but Power Ranger. This, yeah, this, yeah. Is, this this I actually would rather watch a Power yeah, Ranger fight course. in full rubber suit armor than yeah. I would what happens here. However, there's one or two elements uh, with the villain fight towards the end and towards the end of the film that the movie really finds its heart, and I started to kind of get into it, and then it's over, you know, and I'm like, fuck. Okay, maybe the sequel will be the film I want. I don't think this is getting, this is getting a sequel. So. We went to the theater. Now, surprisingly, when I bought the tickets, the theater was empty, right? Well, Usually good, when I go and I buy tickets, there's like seats and I'm like, fuck, right? For superhero films, this one was fucking empty. But when we went there, there were a medium amount of seats. Because the AC's tickets. on in the building. It's 109 degrees outside. Yeah. And I, I thought it was funny because I saw some, School's some back guy on Twitter too, was so. like, hey, man, us Mexicans, we show up. We don't buy tickets in advance like you guys. We show up right on time <laughs> when it's, you know, and something about the AC too. So uh, I don't know if that's what's going to happen. I don't know if the Latin American community is going to show up and support this film. I, However, I suspect this could be another bomb uh, if the tickets were any uh, indication. So that's... My opinion. Uh, what, what do you think, Alex? Um, I think you. The, the the word is generic, and yes. and this. If you are of the mind that you want to see, you're fine with a generic superhero origin story that's really family centric. And I'm not judging you because I think that there's a large amount of people that that's what they're into. Yeah. I just I'm not interested in seeing that anymore. We've done it. We've done it so many times. Oh it's not done particularly well here. If this was your first superhero film, yeah. like maybe. <laughs> and I, it's just like, and so but. it's so generic, and it's so just not up to some of the other ones that we've gotten from DC. And we we joked about this a bunch of times. This feels like the DC origin story that you buy at the swap meet that's not actually licensed, <laughs> and it's uh, it's <laughs> Blue Scarab Man. And then it's we like we went to the flea market. We got, it's, this is it fits in with the the yeah. thing. <laughs> El, 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 uh, el, el, el Beetle Man. I yeah, don't know. it's, it's just, not Blue Beetle. Beetle. It's, persona yeah. i think some of the characters are likable i think some of them are unlike i don't like the sister at all i thought that she oh, was super you. annoying I, I wanted somebody to say that i disliked I, her sister i his did sister. completely disliked her i don't want i didn't like her in any of the scenes that she was in anytime she was talking it was annoying. taking away from some of the things that were working george lopez worked 
beautifully. I thought that a lot of what Jaime did was was good, although him being a, a pacifist coward for like 15 minutes yes. was completely and totally unacceptable. Very annoying. Uh, most of the film, he's sc screaming his head off, and yeah. he's like, ah! <gasps> breathing heavily, and it's like, oh, but once you kind of get past that, then he, he, he takes there's, it over. There's a formula, right? If we're going generic origin story, which I'm fine with a lot of the time, mm -hmm. like you do that for a short, awkward phase, and then what you do is yep. you have him figure it out and then get to the good part. We spent this much time in the screaming, I don't know what I'm doing, coward, awkward yeah. phase, yeah. and this much time being being a badass, and yeah. so I think that the balance was wrong. Also, some of the jokes are super fucking poorly written, and I yeah. get where they're going for. The guy goes, hey, my name's Jaime, and then the white lady goes, Jamie? It's like, that. you know how that, that stereotype joke works? He writes his name down. Yeah. You have to write the name yes. down because the joke doesn't there work. There are ways to do it It's that like would be funny. It's just like, you have no idea. I see what you're going for. Yeah, it, but it's like you fucked it up. It's yeah. like they just forgot to put that scene in where he writes it down. It is funny when the white girl goes, Jamie, and it's, it, she's reading the thing and doesn't know. But when he's like, hey, my name's it. Jaime, like, and she goes, Jamie? Why would she say Jamie? That's no, stupid. You, Stop it. Yeah, so, I think, yeah. There is a lot of the uh, <laughs> imperialism, colonialism, yeah. uh, sex, uh, not, uh, yeah, yeah, even sexism. sexism. And, uh, you know, class warfare and then obviously uh, minorities, uh, what it's like in, in these kinds of uh, situations. So they, they lean on that. And when you touch on these topics, it's perfectly OK, especially from a uh, if the film is coming from a Mexican-American kind of uh, standpoint, that's that's fine. And I really like seeing from a different kind of point of view. But when you approach those topics, you have to do it in smart ways. You have to do it in clever ways and smart ways. And here they're all so blunt. So like, I'm just the, the white lady uh, at the reception and I'm just going to be a fucking bitch to you for no reason. You know, other than he's, I think you're low spam. class <laughs> yeah. and he shows up in the nicest suit, which I looked as good yeah, as this guy. Yeah, he's like deliveries in the back. He, yeah. he does not but look like a delivery That guy's a male all. model. You shut the fuck yeah. up. Like, it's like, you, you know this. He looks like any of us. Like, all right, that, that makes something. sense. It's like, uh, yeah, just, that man should be jumping it's, out of a it's cake. It's hard to, to, to buy that kind of yeah. stuff. Yeah. Um, and it's a shame because, uh, like I said, I do feel it finds its heart later on. I do like some of the characters, like Zolo. <laughs> I like uh, he's got the hot girlfriend who is the daughter of Ted Court. And in this one, there is a big subplot of the original Blue Beetle. Or actually, Ted, I think, is the second Blue Beetle. Um, there's a subplot with there where she's the daughter of that, and then she's got, you know, eventually... There's believability problems all throughout the film, but you're willing to excuse that a little bit to, to get the action there's going. There's one that I don't. I don't excuse we'll, it. We'll get, we'll get to it. Like, we'll get to it. Just uh, one? There's like, oh, the there's like one. 17. Oh, there's yeah. a, this yeah. is why I got punched <laughs> out of the film, and you, you need a little bit more charisma and good from the, the, the ancillary characters to, to kind of make some of that work. Here's the characters that I don't... Uh, uh, okay, I like George Lopez. I liked him. I liked his girlfriend. Uh, I liked the grandma. I didn't. But the problem is... Well, okay, hold on. So, I like the idea of the grandma. Because, like, I can see my grandma in there in certain segments. But the problem is... And I was getting to this, is... The, the vibe is off somehow and i'm not sure why you're not fine they're, they're either they're focusing on it too much this, yeah like they think the audience is going to do this big burst out laugh and i it just i was like this is so dumb you know yeah. and but i liked the idea of it yeah. so i'm gonna have to put her in the uh didn't really work column now here's what really didn't work is the villains uh susan sarandon right she was bad she was real bad and I don't even know why she got cast in this. She's completely out of place. Does not work. Her lackeys. She's the there for CGI paycheck. Film. What it's She's set, there for like, paycheck. Yeah. But I'm, I mean, I didn't even know. She's still working. And I, play. I don't know. And so basically, and then all the rest is not working. His sister, the, the mm -hmm. villain, the, you know, all the characters around it. The generic SWAT team that, you know, most of the time he's fighting against. Uh, and, you know, what he's put up against. So, 
kind of uneven in that sense. The, what was a shame is like they really highlighted Susan Sarandon, whose character has zero depth and is not interesting at all. But she actually has a henchman that they didn't do very do very well with. But he had a crazy good potential, right? Yeah. Because he comes from it's like he's a different thing where he starts out like kind of like he started kind of like Zolo did, but then he's. He's had a super fucking rough life and has been tortured the whole time. And they could have done something. They, they could have done something interesting. This the school of the Americas and Latin America. That shit is a real thing. Yeah, where dictators were raised and stuff. So I will talk about his point. So yeah. there's like potential to have this like really good counter to him, but instead we didn't really get any of it. In fact, very, you only yeah, get it yeah. after the fight has happened or after he's already defeated. It's like that would have been great up front and center, yeah. uh, but we didn't get any of it. No. So what no. was the believable thing that you... Well, the unbelievable thing... That's super... That, oh, yeah, well, super well, unbelievable. I guess we'll talk about it later. Yeah, we'll talk but about it later. Surprisingly, I didn't hate it. Like, I... We saw the trailer for it. I was like, oh, it's going to be boring, whatever. It, and again, it just fell flat for me. It was super generic. I didn't like the whole family getting involved at the very end. It was pretty stupid. And I, I just got knocked out. Joe, how fucking dare you? It was dumb. This is, this is <laughs> supposed to be... You didn't appreciate the culture, Joe? Come on, man. No, I how, did like the some family. of the... Sh she's watching some shows. It's like, oh, man, I remember yeah, that show. Right, right. Sabado Gigante. So, uh, Sabado Gigante. Was that <laughs> yeah. the guy with the trumpet with the black mask? I, 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 I think so, that one. And then uh, they were watching uh, El Chapulín. That Stuff on TV amazing. that me and Joe from our childhood oh, we yeah, remember. Yeah. And uh, CH, the superhero. Was, like, hey, uh, Chuck, was it? Chapulin. Chapulin, yeah. Yeah. That was amazing. Uh, By the way, I think that... that's original stuff. I don't remember that actually being from the show. So I think they did like new Chapulin stuff. Mm. Yeah. Um, I felt like it was too long, too. Like it just, I was too bored. Long? I was uh, bored. I didn't feel. Okay. I was so bored. I understand. I agree with you. Sometimes. The, because it got so tropey, because it got so generic, and the emotions weren't working because you're like, oh, I've seen that in yeah, that film. And, and I've seen that in that film. I've seen that in yeah. that film. And it's an amalgamation of all these different things. Your, your attention starts to wander. It does. And in that sense, it gets kind of boring. Yeah, it's kind of like, it's basically like you heard the joke and you just wait for the punchline. You're like, come on, can you speed this up? I know where this is going. Mm -hmm, yeah. And you're just there, just... I was looking around. I was like, man. I'm, I really I, wanted I like to this. like him I more did, than I liked him. It was just average at best. But yeah. yeah. Eh. It had a working title. Work uh, the working title when they were working on the film was called Mofongo. <laughs> <laughs> no. Because they were doing some filming in Puerto Rico. Anyways. Yeah, uh, God. It, it, so it's a little bit of a letdown. Um, yeah. But there are some good moments. And I didn't hate it. OK, mm -hmm. uh, and it does feel like it when this goes on HBO Max, this is when you can check it out. I wouldn't rush out to the theater uh, to go and watch. And unfortunately, what that's going to mean is it's going to further bomb because uh, I'm just not sure if this thing has legs. Um, I don't know what's coming out next and what this is up against. But I, I just don't understand. James Gunn said Blue Beetle would be the first DCU character. So that's why. Because he's like, I want to use Blue Beetle. Um, well, yeah. um, so I don't know if he's going to have to fall through a fucking portal or if this is the world of the DCU and it's revealed later on Texas. and you go, aha, now I have to go back and watch Blue Beetle, uh, you know, so to boost those sales. I don't know. On Max. Yeah, on Max. Um, but yeah, okay, well, I, I think we covered. Everything the uh, with the okay, so they're, they're obviously yeah. a big big C. Okay, so we were a little hard on the trailer. I remember getting downvoted a little more than normal, something like eighty percent. You know, we're in, usually in nineties, and I think that uh, you know people, had, oh, it's fun. They they really like the Power Rangers kind of vibe to it. And I w every time he fights, I feel that Power Rangers vibe. You know, the whole, you know the movements yeah. that they do, and I'm like, God, I'm into that. Every single time he fights, it's working. It's just the stuff in between is held together by, uh, you know, Elmer's glue instead of, you know, something more interesting, sleek, super glue, something just that's just going to hold together better. It is uh, messy. It's gloopy. It's going to fall apart. And, it, and, it, and it, unfortunately, it stinks. Mm -hmm. um, but I what's good is that if. James Gunn is like, I like Zolo, I, w I like Blue Beetle, I want to use him in the future, I'm down for it. Him and uh, not his sister. 
Him and Nana, don't so bring don't his. She bring gets his left family. behind in the previous we universe. She's so annoying. Her and her stupid fucking power glove. It's not. So, I like George Lopez so more than it's, I thought. It's, so he can come for. So yeah. Yeah. But he's. You like, didn't think you'd like the, George he's Lopez. The, I, the, the stuff he had to say in the the trailer, I didn't think was funny at all. And he actually had significantly more oh, funny things. Oh, we gotta talk about that. So the line that that pissed everybody on the internet. Well, not everybody. Just a certain segment. Batman's a fascist. It it's. Clearly a joke. He was clearly joking, yeah. and it's it's just so fa- it, it's it's a non factor in the whole thing. They do make fun of how, and it's said in the tone of Batman is too fucking serious because when they're looking at all of Ted's gadgets and shit, and he's like, "Look at the costumes. This is a little, you know." He's like, "She," and so she's like, "Yeah, my dad had a sense of humor." Kind of thing. So he likes to be big and flamboyant and fucking bright colored and wacky weapons. Yeah, do goofy shit. And that's cool because it it does throw back to some of the original Blue Beetle stuff. And that's how they get there. Um, That's one of the reasons I didn't like the trailer is because there's a lot of that tone in the trailer. And it looks goofy and silly. And they're trying to make fun of it. And, I mean... I think the problem is the tone. Job, the tone was all over uh, the place. This, yeah. the, the flying uh, Watchman ship that looks exactly like the Owl ship. It is the Blue Beetle ship, and we've seen it in cartoons and stuff before. I think they did a good job on this. Um, you know, you have the, there's a lot of believability issues that uh, essentially his family factors into the plot way more. We're talking about it in spoilers. <laughs> like so it. None of this makes any sense. <laughs> but whatever. Uh, but the Beetlecraft gets a big scene, big action scene, and it was good, but I I hated the music. I hated fucking Motley Crue and all this. Like, a lot of the musical choices just meh, not for me. Um, but okay, so let's go to final verdicts. Uh, I'm going to go with the four. Yeah. I oh. thought it was kind of that. Like, Below average film? Yeah, because, like, like I said, Damn, like, it was, bro. I was kind of bored. I didn't really believe. Joe, this is your people. You're racist. No, man. My people was like El Santo. Oh. <laughs> that that shit was amazing, right? Yeah. That's my super Mexican superhero. Gotcha. <laughs> <laughs> you want a movie on that guy? The rest is amazing. Uh, the tone was all over the place. The jokes didn't really land with me. I didn't care for the villains. The villains was kind of shitty. Uh, Other than the thing that they did at the end, I liked. Yeah, it. Did like you whatever, like that. A little bit, but right. it was a little too little too late. Oh. Uh, I didn't like whenever he first gets a suit, he's screaming <clears throat> nonstop. Even when he's trying to fight, he's like, let me go talk to this guy. This guy's trying to kick his ass. He's like yelling. I was like, look, you're not. Kill me like, stupid. I don't want to yes, dislike you. I don't. You're making me dislike you. It, yeah. I was really I want to talk. I want to talk about a, a moment in the film. Oh, get this spoiler. Sorry. But yeah. Sorry. No, like that was fucking annoying. And he's still screaming. He's like, oh no. He's like, stop it. <laughs> Shut stop up. Stop it. And when it finally kind of like reels me back in, I'm like, mm. Yeah, the movie's almost over, so yeah. it's not really worth going out watch. Just watch whenever it's streaming. So, now. and again, uh, the family aspect. Whenever they would charge a fortress, kind of uh, was very cringy, especially with the grandma. It's like, oh, you don't know stuff about me. She lets her hair down with a machine gun. I'm like, all right. All right. <laughs> Spoil the whole film, goddamn. No, that's God. in the trailer. All right, it is. Okay, yeah, yeah. Cool, cool. yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah she, so, the, his family gets into the mix, and there's believability issues. There. Yeah, I was thinking a five, but you're almost making me want to drop it to a four. I just think this is it, this is like the epitome of generic. It is. It is. It, uh, it's not great. I think maybe if you're really looking for a, a movie that is aimed towards small kids, maybe that's who likes it. Maybe that's the people who are looking at like the grandma jokes and they're just like giggling their fucking ass off the whole time. But it's just I so adults generic. Adults in the audience were laughing. Yeah, I mean, but older, the older yeah. people were really like. I guess they haven't seen a lot of the superhero where, where well, we the watch old every movie. Is the badass, you know, yeah. it's, that's I, such a trope. But what's weird about it is if it's a family movie, there's an exceptional amount of cursing, which doesn't bother me at all. But I was like, wait a minute, is this a family movie? Yeah. They're cursing a Especially lot. Especially in Spanish, is like that. That's, that's not, not what the word. That's, 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 that's not what he said. That's not what he said. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's not what he said. Yeah, so there's a lot of cursing in this movie. So it's not a kids movie at all. Um, I don't know. I, I, I'm still probably going to stick with the five. I think that the tone was completely off. I think that Zolo is half completely unlikable, and I wanted him to die. Um, I mean, seriously, <laughs> I wanted the character to not survive the first half of the movie because he was just screaming like a yeah. little bitch the entire time, being a coward. You don't deserve those powers. Get the fuck out of the DCU. And then he, you know, he won me over towards the end. Yeah. But this is just—it feels like a pile of wasted potential. And um, I would just wait till it comes out on TV. Yep. 
Yeah, uh, I, I'm, I'm on the same page as these guys, though I think it does eventually get good towards the end. It finds its energy. It finds its heart. Um, but I got to tell you, I agree. You know, a lot of the jokes didn't land. Annoying at the beginning. Uh, <coughs> the parts in between, too generic. You've seen all of this before. Every single scene that's about to happen is telegraphed and you've seen yeah. before. And it's a shame. And I think, well, how would you have gone about it, Joe? You know, this is, you know, all you say is a combination of a bunch of different films. I think in order, this is what? What number superhero film is this by now? This film would have been great 20, 10 years ago, 15 years ago. But now it has been done to death cold. and yeah. done better. But do you know how to fly a helicopter? No. Nope. Do you know how to fly a helicopter? Nope. I don't know how to fly a helicopter, but when I see one upside down on fire hurling itself towards a kindergarten playground, I can tell that the person in there doesn't know how to fly a helicopter either. <laughs> and the person who was in charge of this fucking movie didn't know how to have a cohesive movie that was entertaining all the way throughout. Yeah. And I think that this is going to be a movie that people are going to be like, eh, it was fine. And that's best, exactly what no we one is, said. No one's going to be like, this movie fucking changes the game. It's like, it's a movie that everyone's going to forget about. Don't listen to those people. Uh, I'm sure they're fucking oh, yeah. uh, DCEU paid shills and, and people trying to it's get fucking best uh, movie uh, ever, w, WB shills because they know it's going to bomb. Flash is 10 out of 10. Every fucking film is made irrelevant by Zack Snyder, the James Gunn. Goddamn. It's fun. Anyways, there's, wait, actually, it. there's one more. There's still Aquaman 2 to do. <laughs> But we'll get there. So, oh, uh, so four out of ten, five, five out, out of ten. ten. I'm also going to go five out of ten. I want to give it a six, but I just can't. Me too, but there was nothing that to. really. It's a Puerto Rican director, man. It's a Latin American hero. I want to support my people. I like seeing that shit on big screen. It's, yeah, it's, it's a I different perspective for people to go out and see. And unfortunately, I just don't do it. It's a, uh, it's a Netflix. I mean, it's a HBO Max. Yeah. Go watch it on. It's just HBO Max. Max. You can't call it HBO Max anymore. They keep it's just, it's called Max. You Fucking had to re-download Max. a new app so on your stupid. your TV because you can't just rename the app. Yeah, maybe the sequel will be better, but I don't think it'll make enough money. In fact, I I think it will will struggle. I mean, if Flash struggled. I think Blue Beetle is going to struggle even more. Even though the hero's been around since 1939, apparently. I just don't think that Blue Beetle has the pull. And if they, here's what I, w I was going to say before. If it leaned more into the dark elements like a Giver, go watch Giver, by the way. I think <laughs> it could work a little bit better. Okay. Right? Yeah. So anyways, uh, the, the dark stuff with the Scarab. And I'm sure they're going to get to that in the sequel where it's like, okay, maybe this isn't the all nice and, and you know, candy, uh, candy canes and, and uh, cinnamon sticks. All right, so that's our review. We'll go uh, come join us in the spoiler section if you want to know uh, exact details and plot holes and stupid shit. Uh, thank you guys for watching. We'll see you on the next Angry Joe show. Bye, guys. Hey guys, welcome to the spoiler section. Uh, who wants to? One of the biggest things yeah. from the list, from the top of my list, was yeah. uh, the blue the blue scare was taken. Was what? It was taken. So we we're having this building on complete lockdown. She wants to go back and get her <laughs> thing. It's like, oh no, everyone's on high alert. This is going to be impossible to get in. All the guards were just in that one room upstairs. They just walked. There's in. only four There's guards. The nobody whole building. in the fucking building. It, nobody in the fucking building. Yeah, it, it was dumb as shit. It, she goes in there. It's like, uh, oh, I got the key. Let's get out of here. She picks like, the lock the with a paper clip. The, where's the high alert? And, I, and, what, and at, at one what point, kind of, what kind of security team is? Well, this? she said lock the whole building down, and Zola just leaves. How did he get out? Didn't they stop him at the door nope, to say? She, uh, she said, "Hey guys, come there? with me." No. Nope. No, no. So she puts the fucking scarab in a uh, uh, big uh, belly burger, fast fast food thing, and Zolo is going up to her because earlier he got fired because uh, he uh, stepped up, uh, tried to defend her in front of her boss, and he was asking for a job, and she knew that she got caught, so she said, "Give it to this kid. They're not going to check him." 
And, you know, so he ends up with the scarab. Immediately takes it home. I like how they didn't do the thing where it's like, open it, don't open it. No, he goes home and his family just rips it home and just starts looking at it. And they start even playing with it and throwing it around. And then this is when we get uh, the body transformation scene. It chooses him. It glows for him. Then it gets in his body. And uh, it's one of the cooler parts. It reminds me of when Guyver goes on, on your head and then fucking turns into bio bio booster horror show. And they kind of do that here with the scarab legs upside down. And it's cool. Interesting. And then it goes through some tests. So you get your, 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 your action scene, your CGI as he... You know, as they're testing, going into space, and he's like, I, I can't believe I'm flying. It's, it's like a Superman. Superman flies. That's our one reference to Superman. You know, I was going to eventually so they know talk of about him? it. <laughs> they know of him in this universe. Yes. I was looking for posters to see, is a, is a cavil in here? Who is it? No, nothing. He mentions that Superman flies. And if you notice, and I pointed it out to Joe, when uh, they were doing a long shot, the court building right next to the court building is Lex Corp. Mm -hmm. yeah. So Lex Luthor. He went to Gotham um, uh, Law School College. Uh, they mentioned the Flash because that was the most recent tire fire that they did. And so. uh, I think um, that's it. They didn't mention the other two uh, Blue Beetles that came before. Yes. Uh, and there's a big tease at the end. So d is there a DCU connection? No. Is there a DCEU? Not even really. Uh, I mean, this kind of stands on its own. Um, but there, and So then what did they tease, Joe? What's the, the after thing? Uh, the after thing was that Ted Cord is lost, The uh, one of the original Blue Beetles. And at the end, uh, in his Beetle cave uh that they just stumble on and has full power and and apparently nobody ever knew it existed that's and another the company one i was of like the wait a minute who, this mansion is just she's here an imperialistic person that wants to create super soldiers and use technology to conquer shit and she just doesn't she doesn't know about any of this and i was like all right fine if you want to say that he hit it so well like batman and nobody ever knew it was there except for his daughter fine but later on, there's a scene in the film where when they fly the the beetle machine that's been in the fucking cave, there's fucking graffiti. <laughs> Did you see the graffiti on the fucking beetle? So you're telling me homeless people are Oh, the, the, oh, the annoying was, sister did it. Yes. Okay, thank God. I was about to yeah. say. Because I was like, this thing is just... The, apparently, there are homeless people down there maintaining all this equipment. <laughs> Yeah. Yes, they have running, running water. Have if you have a car that sits everything. for two, three years, you know how much stuff you have to do to get that <laughs> thing working <laughs> fucking again? And it's like, no, no, this spaceship that's been down here for 20 years, totally fine. So, so yeah, you got that. Um, <laughs> fucking lost my point. Yeah. What, what was that? What were you saying? Go ahead. We'll go to the next thing. The believability so, the stuff. The believability hurt a little bit. Um, yeah, I mean, like, this is just another thing that the DC has just been completely failing on. I didn't like this in Shazam. I know some people did, where they're like, you know what we need to do? We need to incorporate all of oh, these fucking secondary God. characters and, like, turn them into superheroes. Yeah. And then this one, they turn them into superheroes, too. Grandma totally murders... What, six, seven, eight, nine, ten people? Yeah. Like, kills. Yeah, kills, I kills. I, I actually like it when the family... Like, he, he doesn't want to kill people. I like that his family does kill people. Yeah, it I'm just makes him that. look worse because for the first last 30 minutes before his family had been killing everyone, not only was he not uh, killing like the bad guys who were trying to kill him, he wasn't even fighting back. He was just lying on the ground letting <sighs> his uncle get shot at. This is what I hated the most. There's a scene where uh, evil Susan, Susan Sarandon sends the troopers to their fucking house and she's firing machine guns when he first shows up to try to save his family and then she says turn turn it on the family let's see what this thing can do and so they start shooting at his family he immediately protects them and they are uh, these are real bullets they are trying to murder your family and he goes I can't kill them, even though the quickest way I is to fucking rip some heads off. I know. Like, what the fuck? And are I you lost doing? all respect for him in that you moment get where he's like, family? and it turns into subwoofers, and he starts subwoofering them. And I was like, I've lost yeah. all respect for you. And they get, and I do not want to be your the friend. The grandma has the highest kill count because apparently she was like in a revolution as well. So yeah. she probably killed some people in the past yeah, as well. Totally. Yeah. I respect her. I don't Down respect her. Down with the imperialists. <laughs> imperialists. Yeah. It's stupid. And they try to give her an awesome moment where she's like, duh, 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 and I was just like, mm. <laughs> dying from cringe. 
but I want to like it because it's like, oh, my grandma, you know, oh, pobrecito, you know, and your grandma's so like, and then you, but it just didn't work for me. I wanted it to work. I don't know if it's the actors, the grandma, the lines, the dialogue, the music, what it was. I wanted it to work. I wanted it just for her to be just there for like, give her moment. Give, like, give her just motivation is saying some badass and then that's it. Leave it at that. She does not have to have an action scene. She'd be like, hey, let me help you. Let me I, I, think I want her to have an action scene. I just, I think you could salvage it. Ow. There's some way you could have done it where it would have been Second draft. Better. This movie needs a second draft. It needed to have someone else there to, to kind of oversee and go, whoa, whoa, whoa. There's all the, all the pieces here can work. You just don't have them together in a way that does. Yeah. So you get the girl involved. She's like, oh, my God, I'm so sorry uh, that I got your son involved. And now all of you are involved. There's probably assassins coming to kill you. And they're like, what? And then uh, George Lopez is like a Mexican Doc Brown, I think they call him. Yeah. And he creates this little machine that uh, can scramble signals and, and uh, output El Chapulín. El Chapulín episodes onto their screen. And this, I did laugh. This is one good joke here is the that. security guards are like, oh, what the fuck is going on? They're all serious. And then the Chapulín comes on screen and then the, the one Hispanic. The, yes, of course. Ah! Yeah. And he starts watching yeah. it, and the other guys. Like, yeah, the guy's serious? a comedian. He's funny mm. guy. Oh yeah, I think yeah. I recognized him. Yeah. No one's gonna laugh at you, mijo. <laughs> so, um, yeah. So uh, we lost respect for him. Then he's doing that, and then this fucking corporate guy comes down with the intention to kill his new girlfriend that he's interested in. I mean, she's in the fucking area, and mm. then he kill him. And then as they're fighting, he just wants to talk to him, like. If you had set up this, you have to set up these kinds of irrational behaviors. What do you want to make him homage? I refuse. Yeah, I, I don't know. Maybe he actually did cause somebody's death in the past and it Oof, fucking mortally. Too dark. Yeah, well, I don't know. But see, at least that would make I it know. interesting. It, but it, he's it, just fucking. It, no, I don't. Uh, he was it, trying well, to pull like a Jackie Chan, but he's not like Jackie no, Chan. Not yeah. Jackie. <laughs> no, leave me alone. Yeah. I go through church. <laughs> he was even defending himself, though. Like, this guy was just taking the punches. He was yeah. getting cars thrown at him. He wasn't jumping out of the way. He wasn't defending himself at all. Yeah. And it was such a poorly done scene that, like, I wanted him to die. It's like, give it to someone that else. That was going too far, but that's Alex. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's just not like one. Uh, I hated his sister. Every second she was on, and there's a lot yeah. of sister stuff in the beginning. I and then we her face, her stupid glasses, and her character pissed me off. Yeah. But so, like, <laughs> this is an origin story. I shouldn't have said that out loud, <laughs> Anyway, <laughs> but if it's an origin story and the origin sucks and he sucks yeah. when he gets the suit, it's like you want me to root for this fucking guy. And so I don't, I don't know. She gets a power glove, oh, and she can go. Glove. She can have a fist, or she can have a shield. She and at some point, <clears throat> uh, okay. And so, so then eventually, uh, after the scene of the people showing up and shooting up his family and him doing jack shit about it, at one point, um, his family, his mother, and. Uh, Grandma disappear from the frame, mm -hmm. and they it is you. they ran, but it's so stupid because they're not helping, even though the rest of the film they're like they would never not help, but yet they disappear. And so his sister's there, and at one point I thought the sister got gunned down. <laughs> right? Yeah. There was like people. I, I thought she got hit. Yeah. No. I thought she got hit too. I was like, and use I was that. Like, <laughs> okay, use that. We're, but no, actually, uh, she, she trips. trips. She trips, and then her his father comes to go help her. And then he gets punched out. And then as they get back up to leave, he has a heart attack, a cardiac arrest. And that has – and he's been very supportive, the whole film, very gentle. Mm -hmm. He's like the wise old, uh, you know, father figure. And they play that up so, so much. Um, I wish they would have given him a little bit more, more character, but I get it. He's <coughs> a, a, a trope. And he give and he wants his son to succeed and and find a, a path in life and the journey. I, I, when they have this moment where they lose their house, their job, and they say this is about the journey and it's just us being together. What's the next step? That was great. I mm -hmm. like that was well yeah. written. I was like, that's a clever fucking way to put things. And now I'm going to put things like that. So, anyways, but it's the most it's competently <clears throat> done thing. Like every scene with him and his father are just, I mean, amazing, right? And so the father, you know, passes away, and then even then. And there's like he's in the dying state and we don't know if he's really talking to his father or if you know if it's just in his brain because they could do that in the but, sequel that maybe the scarab's like fucking with him it's yeah. not his father that's the scarab link with me yeah d doing doing crazy stuff but i mean all of these scenes are really really good and so they've shown that they can do these amazing competent scenes 
And it just unfortunately for me made the ones that they didn't do very well worse by comparison yeah. because it's like they really did nail those ones. Yeah, so his father ends up dying. Um, he gets captured because the claw, <laughs> which they never use again, never reference again. I don't know if it's a comic book it's character. It's a one-time it's use. A fun thing. <laughs> purple, yeah. purple lightning versus blue lightning. Purple wins, I guess, and he gets captured. He knows he's going so, to be shot. The beetle has told him that he's going to be shot, and that this is a super weapon that's going to take him out, and he your, just does the dumb thing yeah. again. Uh, uh, the reason his dad died is because he refused to kill any of these people. Yeah. It is 100% his his fault because he just <laughs> knocks them down yeah. and then they get back up and go oh he just knocked us down and then they kill his father yes uh and then the the, the the ai in his brain is like hey that thing's gonna kill you and then you know your dad will die and because of it and he's just like no and he doesn't pay attention nope. so this is he's still very much in his he's an absolute moron and i wanted him to die face of the movie <laughs> So then we go to this phase of the movie where the family, you know, there's smoke and then you got to get it back. And they decide, (laughs) they decide that they are going to take on Cord, uh, which is stupid and it's uh, dumb. And uh, if not for uh, a trained high, they're paramilitary force assassins. I I get it. Family is important. And you want to factor in the family, and I want you to factor in the family, but I don't want to turn them into superheroes, like Alex said, and they are. And instead, it could have been like they come after him at home, and the family actually has stuff that you didn't realize that the family has, and like, oh shit! But then eventually, they overpower the family. That that's fine. But no, this film, the family turns into the goddamn Justice League. Everybody has their own weapons because this, the daughter of Ted comes and she goes, hey, follow me. And then we go down to the Ted cave and she's got all this technology that at no point has she ever used to try to get the company back on track. Like, there's none of it makes any goddamn sense. She doesn't sense. want to do weapons. It's just no like weapons. because the plot needed it at that moment mm-hmm. is when it then shows up. Uh, and so then the family gets all these their different weapons, and they go and they they basically break him out. It's the Expendables. It turns into the Expendables, where they're going through like these dark tunnels, and everyone's got guns, and they're killing like random henchmen. And but it's Grandma. Grandma's making the plan. She's like, "All right, show me what's going on. Uh, this isn't my first rodeo. Yeah, we're gonna use these tunnels. We're gonna do distraction." plans out everything. I understand some people probably think that, like that's their favorite part but it was just it, it I, just I mean, didn't work to me I was like yeah, I, I liked it when she was doing the plan and then people were listening to her I mean, the dad's dead so it's like somebody needs to take over is it going to be George Lopez no it's the grandma no, what did you think of Dr. Sanchez uh Freeing him because the lady kept misnaming him over and I over. I knew that that oh, was going to happen. It was, of the very, the very what, it was, movie. what it was is because he was Hispanic and they were Hispanic, okay? There is a link between his, us Hispanics and be like, hey, man, I got your back and this and that. And so that's... and. The they're, beetle board behind him turned him into tomato paste, and yep. he knew he was going to get turned yeah. into tomato paste. Yeah, I, that, I would it, let you misname me all the time. Like, that's a big, bad beetle board. I'm not letting <laughs> him turn me inside out. That's not what I'm saying, because <laughs> I agree with you on that. It's a, 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 a stupid a stupid moment where this guy sacrifices himself because he finally realizes he's been doing bad things. and uh, He's already created over a thousand evil exoskeletons that they notices, will use to conquer the Earth. He notices how they are beaten up on this family, this poor family, and, and misnaming him, and they're also misnaming me. And then he has a moment in the film where he says, Hi, my name is not Sanchez. My name is... Jose Luis Pepe uh, Cuca Cucato uh, I yeah, don't know De La Cruz so De, De, yeah, De, 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 like, right, uh, <laughs> It should be funny and I, it, my it, head it is should, funny but, no. but it didn't work either no. mm-hmm. and then he gets killed from behind um, and I'm Hispanic so it should have worked and I wanted it to work it didn't Uh and then so, but they upload. So the reason why they capture him is because they want the scarab. I was like, well, but the scarab is combined with his body. You're not going to get the scarab out and you're going to fuck everything up. You're going to kill him. Oh, I see. You're just going to kill him and take the scarab. Got it. No. You just want the code. Apparently, <clears throat> they want the code. Mm-hmm. It's the fucking dumbest shit ever. What are you talking about the code? It's the code. It is alien technology. How do you have an interface that is going to take alien code from a unit that has no fucking input or output? They did Independence Day. And it's a code that's just stupid. Don't you dare and I fucking that. hate <laughs> it's it. Amazing movie. I, I get it if you want to go horror movie and like trying to rip it from his body and shit, and that would have been more interesting, and it probably would have been rated differently, but you yeah. know. 
they had to do this stupid thing. And they do this bar where the bar fills up to 100%, so it fucking works. What? So now, now she has a Carapis or whatever his fucking name is, the guy in the red robot, mm. OMAC, or OMAC, one man army dick cunt. I, I don't know. So <laughs> then he he is powered up by it. So I thought, okay, he's going to have the power of the Blue Beetle. They don't re- he, he does, but they don't press that. You know, it's just it, it, he's just a bigger baddie now. He's stronger is what even the Blue Beetle says, not She's ca- he's countering all my moves. He knows all my nothing interesting comes from it. He had a whip. It's to do action figures. He had a whip. Do sla- <laughs> CGI bits slamming into each other. It, and I'm yeah. like, fuck. If you're gonna do that, then put him in a goddamn rubber suit, keep him on the ground, and let's do some Power Rangers with some goddamn explosions <laughs> and you know the little squibs that, yes. that, that hit yeah. when they hit. Oh, yeah. I'd have been like, yes. I mean, it's a DC trope, but it's like, oh, this guy's a trained soldier, a trained killer. He has the same powers as me, but he, ha- you know, he's Zod, and he's been killing people his entire fucking life, and they didn't do any of that stuff. It's just. All the, and then how did he beat him? He just got mad, and then he I had knew to... the second. I knew the fucking second that all of us. So this guy's been a, a fucking dick the whole time. All of a sudden, there's a little pendant that they show yeah. Alex, and he wants his pendant, and she goes, "Don't worry, I'm gonna say this for you." I'm like, "He's they're, they're gonna make him good at the end. they're, yeah. they're gonna fucking oh, redeem course. him." Of course, yeah, they have to. So it it's very it's so hot right now to redeem the. Yeah, the uh, but this was like the one good thing. And even this is a troll, but this I I think worked somewhat towards the end. So they're doing the CGI battle. It's yeah, not he, interesting. He finally gets the courage because uh, he thought he's getting uh, his George, ass kicked at George first. George died. There, yeah. yeah, and then uh, you know he thinks uh, uh, Rudy uh, dies, and so he's like, Ugh! and I'm like, all right, let's go. I think from that moment on, I liked the film. <laughs> When he's like, ah! <laughs> but this is like the last 20 minutes, <laughs> right? He stops fucking whining, he and does. he turns into Blue Beetle. A fucking killer. And, yeah. And I'm Blue like, Beetle had to should have just him. done this from the beginning. And he attempts to kill the guy, but, you know, he, in fact, he would have killed the guy. But the Scarab actually stops him and says, hey, when I, when I linked up with him... I read his memories, and then they show his memories, and you doing this now, like yeah, now. This now. <laughs> uh, they give him some depth, and his m- mom was killed in a fucking napalm attack out in the middle of Latin America, and he attended this school, which is a real thing, by the way. This is the School of the Americas, uh, where they a lot of actual Latin dictators learned and, and, and uh, came out of and, you know, started doing brutal shit in all the different countries and shit. And he was apparently a part of that. So I don't know. He's a, they, he's a super soldier. Then they, but no, this, this is a little child. And then she finds Susan Sarandon finds him and says, yeah, this we'll take this random seven year old for no reason. He's a child soldier at that time. You, you see that you see him execute someone when he's just a little kid. Yeah. So they give a little bit of depth, and, and when he shows mercy to him, uh, he kind of lets go. The guy is surprised. But what we know of the guy, I don't buy that the guy just instantly stops. Now, if they would have said, our minds linked, and like, I can feel your thoughts, and you can feel my thoughts, then it's a little easier, because you can get the goodness in Zolo's heart. Uh, I'm sorry, uh, um Jaime's heart to him and something like that. But no, is it simply he switches sides because he's like, I could have killed you. I'm not going to kill you. And he's like, all right, this is fucking stupid. They, they, there's a line. Um, do you remember the line where he says, I remember now when she oh. said everything I've done to you. Yeah, so yeah, may, yeah. It, maybe there was it, a part early in the movie that they cut out where he just can't remember his sense. past. Death. And then, Oh, that's it. You're because, right. But they, but they, there's none of that. It doesn't it exist doesn't, in the movie. It's, it's not executed he just, in that way. He looks at Susan Saran and she's like, remember everything I've done for you. And he's like, I do remember. I remember you recruiting me as a child soldier and torturing me and doing it. And so we don't know that he has amnesia. And that maybe scene that's... was vital. If that's on the cutting room floor, you fucked up bad. Yeah. Because maybe it did unlock all those memories, and that makes total sense. And then it's like the end of Robot Jocks. I was like, okay, I'm I'm, I'm liking this. They they're both kind of side by side, and it's like, oh, where are we going now? You know, the Fist villain bumps. is, is uh, yeah. 
No. Uh, instead, Susan Sarandon's like, oh, she's fighting with the lady over there. The lady uh, used bubble gum, by the way. Terrible that CGI. <laughs> Shut up, Joe. That was her childhood gift. That from reminded her me of like, that Power Ranger secret. Spy uh, kids. Yeah, ooze. Yeah, so she spits a fucking uh, bubble gum in the helicopter, and then the lady tries to shoot her, and then they both fall out, but they're in the bubble gum, and they land, and the bubble gum snaps, and they fall out of the bubble gum, and then the helicopter blows up. <laughs> Why are you laughing? And then That's she crushes stupid. the fucking pad, and then Susan the Strand is like, kill them! And, yeah, the code, because she wanted to make an army of, uh, of the guys, and then he's like, kill them, and he's like, no, I remember everything. And he like grabs her and he like drags her towards the fire and he's going to blow himself up and cause a nuclear or cause a little bit of explosion. Not a nuclear explosion. But then he does and he kills her. And for no and all reason, suits. she's like, I advise you to run. And so then we end the stupid scene. It's like, really? Come on. Is it, are we hitting every trope where he has to run from the explosion? He can fly <laughs> so fast. Why are you running? And why are we running? I don't know. Because it looks cool on the explosion. Okay, and then everything's cool. The family goes back to their home. They realize, oh, the ha our home is destroyed, but the whole neighborhood is there with food and stuff. You can stay with them. And then it's like, oh, but we still have no home. And so then the cord lady shows up, and she says, we'll take care of you. I thought she was going to offer him a job because she's like, you know, your skills or whatever. But no, she just gives him a car, and he's like, I don't really like that one. <laughs> can somebody help me like it? And uh, they then the they house. have this this scene and uh, where you know they've been trying they've been maybe kissing. George interrupts them once when they're about to kiss. They almost kiss on the Beetle ship, um, and then they finally get to kiss. And uh, you know, sure like, he saw the wiener. There's nothing to be nervous about. I like about. it. He gets the hot chick in the end. She is beautiful, and and uh, he's like, I'll, I'll give you a ride to the island. She's like, I want to go. I got to go to my dad's. Because there's paintings, my mom's paintings. They weren't that them. good. <laughs> <laughs> they weren't Ooh. that good. No, that's right. They Your dead mom can't paint. <laughs> It's like okay. stick figures. They're like, I'll take you there. So they, like, yeah, all right. They fly off together. He gets the girl, and uh, his family's like, yeah. Um, yeah, no. <laughs> okay, and then and then like I said at the end. Uh, the beetle cave lights up and it's Ted. Assumedly, it could be somebody else if they want to have a little room. Your father's alive, he says. It could be somebody trying to give this message. It could be Ted himself, uh, you know. Um, and maybe we'll see somebody wear that fucking suit that's uh, ridiculous and in the background the whole time. And Jenny. I like it. Yeah, uh, the uh, original Grandma movie. put it on. Oh, It'll be so good. She'll know <laughs> Kung Fu now. I don't understand the song they use, and they kind of focus on one of the mannequins. Oh, where the suit wasn't there. Where the suit wasn't so there, because he's still wearing he's it. He's wearing it. and He's yeah. in the quantum realm. Yeah, that's kind of what it's, it feels yeah, like. That's what yeah. I thought he was. <clears throat> all right. Well, I think we covered it all, right? Yeah. Yeah. A little CGI. Why does it always have to devolve? It? Man, so, one of these days, a big budget movie is going to be like, fuck it. We're going to do the Power Rangers at the end. Did you like uh, also when uh, the Beetle came in crashing and it's like, hey, now it's time to fart on you guys. Oh, oh yeah. So and that, it makes a farting noise. It's called noise. bug fart. It didn't need to be a fart noise. Yeah, it's bug fart. They did, they did an actual <laughs> fart noise at the end. Yeah, it was very... <laughs> it's they curse like every 30 seconds. It's this movie curses more than I do, and I curse it's a lot. <laughs> So it's, the kids don't understand Spanish it. Cursing. Oh, oh, okay. It's fine. Why well, people don't know that it's a curse? <laughs> Anyways. Yeah, um, it's like the subtitles don't match up, but whatever, man. <laughs> yeah. So I didn't understand. So so George Lopez knows how to fucking drive and do all of the technology. He knows yep. exactly where the buttons are. I'm like, really? God, come on, man. Yep. Uh, they could have done a scene. They do a little bit where he goes straight to the computer and he's doing that. It's like... Yeah, but the timing of all that stuff doesn't work. If you really want to make it work, then, you know, he was looking at the manual or something like that. Then that kind of makes sense. It's like, hey, I mean, I can just learn how to do this thing where he's coming in too fast. And he press the air brakes. The air brakes are two fucking parachutes, parachutes that rip off. Yeah. It's so then, easy to use because at the end, the mom was driving. Yeah, yeah. this doesn't make any sense. Yeah. So then That's why hard. are you just slamming into the fucking <laughs> castle because you don't know how to... 
stop or I don't she know. She said, you're you coming in too hot. What are you doing? So. It doesn't make any sense. They're superheroes. Just there Everyone in this movie is the superhero at the scene. end. So then they crash land, and I'm like, oh, well, they're dead because all the soldiers are around them, and they start shooting, And but then we get the scene where it comes alive, and it farts on everybody. And then I thought there was going to be missiles the or something. Oh, yeah, it actually stabs a dude. Like oh, I said, dead. his family kills everybody, <laughs> and I'm into it. Yeah. I'm very fucking happy. I, I like, and yeah, I'm okay. Like, oh, shit, I'm actually okay with their one son, the prodigal son, doesn't want to kill anybody. That's fine. But the family kills anybody, yeah. everybody, and I'm cool. I like that. Look, Batman doesn't kill people. I mean, he maims them and paralyzes yes, them and stuff. Yeah. Oh, and then DC, yeah, but vegetables. it's like... vegetables. <laughs> yeah. I'm fine with, with him not wanting to kill people, but him not wanting to defend himself... Or defend anyone else uh, was dumb. And By was the way, choice. he did kill people. Uh, when his sister shows up to help him, she gets separated from his girlfriend in the tunnels. It's red. And she uses her stupid glove to punch anvil. somebody <laughs> and get uh, block the shots. He shows up to help. And he uses a motherfucking anvil. The thing is so big. When he hits somebody, <laughs> every single one of your bones, yeah. bones are broken, and you have internal bleeding, and you will die. But it's a styrofoam anvil, because he doesn't kill people. Gosh. They're all dead anyway, it's an again, explosion. Oh, they so died of the explosion, it, yeah. And, and all, a lot of it is filmed kind of poor. Everything is in the dark, or it's, the lighting is really bad, or the camera's up too close, and so it's difficult to appreciate some of the Power Ranger moves that whoever is in the suit is doing, and I, I, I was upset by There's that. a scene in the trailer that looks really good where he kicks some guy awkwardly against the wall, and it's slowed down in the trailer, and it's faster in the movie, and it doesn't look anywhere near as good. There's So parts of the trailer actually look better than the movie. Yeah. Um, and then there's one final scene at the end of the credits. Is it Aquaman? Is it Henry Cavill? Is it The Rock? <laughs> no, it's none of those things. It is... El Chapulín. El Chapulín. <laughs> and then they show a little bit, uh, but there's no subtitles here, so I'm wondering if any of the, the people that don't understand Spanish should know, like, he has the strength of a rat, <laughs> and he fails at doing so. So the whole thing with the Chapulín is that he thinks he's a hero, and he's doing hero-like things, but he sucks at everything. Mm -hmm. But yet he has the heart of gold and blah blah blah. So, but I don't know if anybody understood, <laughs> except for all, like, only the people that guy? understood <laughs> Spanish. I'm like, hey! I mean, you get it. You can see in stop motion animation that he's failing at everything. Yeah. But still, it, it's. Um, but I thought not, at least they would have put subtitles. But it's just the stop motion animation that they did. I think they that's all new for for the film, and uh, that's it. So they just a big advertisement for that old thing. I was like, that's kind of that's kind of awkward. You kind of wasted that opportunity to talk All about right. Aquaman. But wasn't Aquaman supposed to come out before this originally years ago? Because I know Aquaman two got delayed. I think you're right. Lot, so I think you're right. This was probably supposed to be the last one. Um, yeah. Or, so yeah. Batgirl. Right. Maybe Batgirl was the last one. Do you remember that one got? No. The CW one can't cancel. <laughs> there was gonna be on Max. And this one was going to be on Max, but it went to theater release. And it feels like it. It looks like it, it feels like it, and uh, makes sense. That's where it belongs. All right, guys. Uh, mm -hmm. So that's Blue Beetle. I wouldn't rush out to see it. I wait for HBO Max. Uh, we wanted it to be better. Even the whole, uh, you know, heritage family, Mexican, Latin American thing, we liked, but it it gave it that uh, interesting flavor. But it just um, it's uneven. All right. Thank you guys so much for watching, and we will see you on the next Angry Joe Show. Bye, guys.